Here she is, where all the magic happens. So apparently it's a thing where people like to see other people's garages and shops. So that's what I'm gonna show you guys tonight. I'm gonna show you my garage. I wouldn't really call it a shop, it's kind of small. First off, before we go any further, I just wanna say I am extremely blessed and thankful and fortunate to have what I have. I am not complaining in any way, shape, or form, and this is definitely not a, hey, look at me, look at what I got. It's taken me quite a while to get where I've gotten and the tools that I've got. I am simply just sharing that with you to show you what I have and maybe some advice for some younger generations coming up looking to get some tools and, and steps and go from there. So here we go. So from the outside looking in, this is actually a little bit bigger than a two bay, a standard two bay, this kind of like an oversized two bay garage. Obviously the trucks are a little bit bigger and I can I can actually fit the long bed in here as well uh, with the toolbox and stuff up front. It's just kind of cramped, so I don't. It just leaves more room to actually walk around and work inside. The other truck, on the other hand, always stays in that bay. That's its own bay. So we're just gonna start on the walls, I guess, and walk around. I got a small air compressor there. Shop vac, battery charger, floor jack, torpedo heater for the winter time because it, obviously it's cold. Motorcycle lift, transmission jack, and these ramps. Now I don't know if you've watched my clutch video. Actually, let me let me pull one of these out. These are actually from Rhino Ramps, and I believe they lift about six to seven inches i don't know exactly but these things are awesome these things weren't really expensive and they are actually rated for about sixteen thousand pounds and believe it or not putting a vehicle up on jack stands underneath the axles doesn't get it anywhere near as tall as this does with the height of the tire already still on the vehicle Got my awesome wheels, which are still here taking up space. So we got my knack box. This is actually I use for all my fabrication stuff. You can see I got all types of clamps and blades. Excuse the lighting, guys. You can see I got some funnels in here. Then I have all of my shits falling all over the place. I got flap wheels, grinding wheels, my grinder, usually my sawzalls in here, pole saws. Uh, in these cases, I have more uh, sanding and grinding stuff, uh, air chisel, all of my Dremel stuff is in this stuff, uh, metal circular saw. Moving along, this is uh, like fluids and cleaning products and stuff I have over here. Up top, this is all of my impact drill drill bits, charging stuff, batteries. So my good friend Ryan, who's a snap-on dealer, is gonna hate me and never be friends with me again for saying this, but this Milwaukee wrench right here that uses these small, eh, other way. This Milwaukee wrench right here that uses these small batteries, this thing's like a 100 bucks. And this thing, honestly, speeds up production so much when you're disassembling stuff. It is 3 8 drive, and it's got quite a bit of snot. And when you're taking stuff apart that like is already broken free, uh, it really speeds stuff up. You're thinking to yourself, well, I could just unspin it by hand. I swear to you, that thing shaves off some serious time. Got a roll cart with some blankets, more cleaning supplies. I usually use that roll cart if we're working outside to wheel outside. My topside creeper. I love this thing. I got this. Gr I got my grill on top here, which I still want to hang on the wall, which I haven't gotten to. Topside creeper, gotta be. I'm gonna do like I'll do like a top five best garage investments that I have found to just be a lifesaver. Some people hate these things. I personally love them, especially if you're laying over top of you know Fords, which get worked on a lot, Dodges, you know injectors, stuff like that. It really, really helps save your back, and if you're laying down, it like really, really helps. Engine hoist hiding in the background. This is kind of like my metal fab table that can be moved out. Uh, I got my waste oil bins, my kerosene for my heater. I just recently put up 
these toolboxes, which I've honestly just thrown random shit in there for now. They're not really organized at all. Um, this is my toolbox, which I might come back to that after I'm done wrapping up. I might, I'll might i close with that. So over here, just more storage. Got some trophies and some broken parts up top. Older stereo, helmets, more unused parts, projects that you guys kind of know about. Take down these bins. This is all of my electrical stuff, wire loom, extra wire, connectors, all that kind of good stuff. This one is actually all stainless braided lines that I've used in the past, leftover fittings. Up top here, we have some of my broken parts and let me show you some of this stuff. We got a stock intermediate shaft out of the first transmission out of my 05. This magnificent hunk of aluminum, billet aluminum, is the first turbo off of my pull truck. This is a HX60 and believe it or not that used to be a compressor wheel and that's what happens when the compressor wheel hits the side of your cover at really high RPMs. And that's what you're left with. Nice. That and this freaking shit used to be welded just like that. Blew the whole damn thing off. Ladder because homeowner problems. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Gas cans. What do you want? I'm filming. <laughs>
rivet kit set. This is bearings and drive uh, race pullers. Oh no, like that's that's what that is. This is spark plugs. Who needs those? Uh, oh, this is a uh, snap ring pliers. Snap ring pliers. Some AC tools. Multimeter. Test light. OBD2 reader. Some more pliers. Snap ring pliers. Punches. Some chisels. Das Hamas. This is like another miscellaneous kind of like tape, scissors, a little setup there. Everything that you usually grab when you're doing little shit. Ratchets. These are like pliers, needle nose pliers, regular pliers, crimpers, scissors, crescent wrenches, vice grips. files these are inverted torx sockets Let's see if it'll focus yep inverted torx which again use very rarely these sockets are actually uh, for meant for square stuff these are actually meant to hold taps specifically hold taps which are well worth it if you've ever tried to hold a tap Oh. If you've ever tried to hold a tap with a crescent wrench and try and turn, pain in the ass. These things are awesome, a little expensive from Snap-on, but well worth it if you're screwing stuff up and tapping stuff. These are all torque wrenches, stuff that if you are going to work on motor stuff quite a bit, you're definitely going to want to have. Dial calipers, another good thing to know how to use and measure. Uh, this is the more electrical stuff, zip ties, everything, uh, heat shrink tubing, uh, soldering stuff, crimpers. This Craftsman box over here, the reason I keep this thing around is because most of my sockets are actually six point. This Craftsman box, as you can see, maybe kinda, is mostly all 12 point stuff. So I never know when I'm gonna need uh, maybe a 12 point over a six point. So I keep that box on top just in case, you never know. So I forgot to show you guys these up close. These are thread checkers, male and female, in all sizes for metric and standard. I got these thinking like, oh, these will be handy once in a while. I use those things all the time. Say you buy something and you want to get longer bolts and you don't know exactly like what the thread is everything, double check it right before you go to the hardware store. I know they got them there, but half the time they're all whooped and they suck, so these really help. All right, guys, so to wrap up this video, I just want to chat with you guys for just like a couple short seconds. I'm going to try and make this real quick. Um, a little bit of background, because I've gotten asked this before. I went to school out in Wyotech, out in Pittsburgh for automotive. Uh, most of these tools and my original toolbox, I was fortunate enough to kind of roll into my school. And at the time, I'm not sure if they still do it or not, all the toolboxes and tools, if you were a student, were like half off. Everything was completely half off. They had really good deals with uh, combining kits to have everything. So that's actually where most of my tools came from. Like I said, I was fortunate enough just to roll everything together with school and be able to get that stuff. I had a much smaller box when I first went into my first job. This box behind me that I showed you guys, the triple bank, was actually used from the Snap-on truck and I was able to trade the smaller box that I had in there for that one, so that's where that box came from. So again, this whole video wasn't, hey, look at me, look at the tools I got. I'm just trying to help you guys out. If you're just starting out, you don't need anywhere near this amount of tools. A lot of misconception is that you need all this stuff to start working on things, and that's just not true. The thing that's really most important is the knowledge that you have up in here and what you can do with these. That's what makes you good at working on things. You don't need really expensive tools and toolbox. So if you're actually just starting out, like my biggest recommendation is to go get one of those Craftsman box in the back. One of those like three, 400 piece toolbox kits that you can get for a couple hundred bucks. Those things usually have, especially with these Dodge trucks, you can almost take apart an entire freaking truck with just that Craftsman box. You don't need all this other stuff. It, it helps accumulating it down the road, but it certainly is not going to hinder you from working on 
pretty much anything and everything. So as always guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for all the support. I really appreciate it. And we'll see you on the next one.